I'm Angela, Community Manager at Trusted House Sitters, and welcome to my house sit. You, as you may or may not know, I pet sit full time, just like many of you out there, and uh, as well as working for the company. And here I am in Brighton, in this lovely home. We're looking after this adorable golden retriever, and we've been with him for a week and a half, and like always, he's ours now. Gowan and Ginny have uh, kindly allowed us to film here this morning. And a big thank you to everyone who sent in their questions from our first um, Auntie Angela that we had out last month and they they came in thick and fast we had over 250 and the questions that we'd like to answer today are ones that we get asked frequently and the first question we're going to answer today is from Heather and she asked can I pet sit with my own dog there are some sitters who successfully sit with their own pets and there are some owners who welcome sitters own pets um, but it will actually um, sort of reduce your possibilities, not because people don't like your pet, but because it can be very difficult introducing a new pet into a pet's environment. Um, if somebody goes to have another sort of pet join their family, they will be told do it gradually because you never know what's going to happen. And it's the same thing. Um, you're going into a pet sit with a dog of your own and it may all be wonderful while the owner's there, but there could be problems that arrive when the arises when the owner leaves. And that's a situation we never want to have. So, and the other thing too is it depends on location. Um, you know, big homes with big gardens, they may be able to accommodate another dog. Um, but it's, it's worth knowing that yes, there are some, but it will reduce your opportunities. However, we have a combined membership, which many owners actually take out because they want to enjoy pet sitting, but they, and then they can leave their own pet happy at home with their own chosen pet sitter. And so everybody wins. We had a question from Bob who actually lives in South America. And as you know, we've got a global community and he wanted to know, as many people want to know today, how you can actually speak to a person and get some information about trusted house sitters. Well, we have a 24 hour membership services team. There is a local phone number on the homepage, wherever you are, and you can just call that. If it goes to voicemail, simply leave your contact details and a brief message and somebody will get back to you. And the next question, which gets asked by, you know, all the time from our new members, and it's from Layla, and she wants to know how you get picked for the first time. And it's a super question because, you know, everybody starts from the same point. Um, I've been doing this for 10 years since Trusted House It Has Started. But like everybody else, I started in exactly the same place. So what it means is, you know, you create a great profile, um, detailed um, with all of your experience. Then you add photographs, you add references, and you can get external references. And these are references from people who know you, can attest to your trustworthiness. And, and more importantly, you have to really convey the fact that you love animals, you've got experience with animals, that you're professional, you're warm, and you're somebody that actually can walk into somebody else's home and take over looking after their homes and their pets. When you're preparing this, the one thing I always say is keep the owner's hat on. That is, think about it from the owner's perspective. What would you want to know about the person that was coming into your home, um, you know, to look after your pets? And, you, and, and what is it that would give you that insurance and that confidence to actually choose you? And it really is about the way you present yourself and the time that you take to invest um, creating that profile um, will assure your success. And then when you apply, um, that message that you send to owners, it, you know, you only get one chance to make a good first impression. And they're looking for somebody that is like them, that they know their pets are gonna be safe and happy and loved with. And it's making that connection. So treat it like you're applying for a job. And uh, yeah, and just be patient, be persistent, but apply for the right sit and not just any sit. We have sitters on the site from every walk of life and every age and every circumstances. And Sue has gone through a transition in her life and, and she asked, I'm 62 years old and I've just got divorced. Would I be accepted as a sitter? 
And my answer is, of course you would. Um, you're going to be a solo traveler, but you're also looking to, you know, engage with other people. And the fact your age means nothing. We have sitters on the site of, of, from all ages. As long as you are healthy, as long as you are active and, and it's something that you really want to do. And then you put all of that passion into your profile and you apply as, you know, a single sitter. And of course you would be accepted. And another question we get asked about is travel and travel expenses because there are so many amazing opportunities in so many places around the world. And of course there is an expense attached to it. And so Sandra wrote in and said, you know, what other expenses and what airfare, etc. Now, sitters are responsible for their own travel costs. Um, but when you consider that accommodation is the largest cost involved with travel, then it can be any um, sort of costs or airfares can be offset because you're saving on accommodation and all of those related costs. When you get into a home, you don't have to go out and eat at expensive restaurants. You can do your own laundry. You get Wi-Fi free. Everything in there is 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 free and at no cost. But the other point of this is you don't have to travel around the world in order to have amazing experiences. You can have them close to home. So we get many owners who um, have amazing experiences with their sitters and then you know, think to themselves, well, this is probably something that I'd really like to do. So Malcolm wrote in and he said, I'm an owner that's had sitters and I'm, we're thinking of becoming combined members. What advice do you have? Um, the advice is that you actually know how well it works and so then you look at it from a sitter's point of view and, and, and what you expect from your sitter and what you've had from your sitter and you're actually going to do the same for other owners and so having a combined uh, membership and going and sitting is you're actually having the same experiences that you've given your sitters and it's just about what you looked for in your sitter an owner's going to be looking for from you and so it's just preparing the profile and applying for the right sit and the sit that and, and you've come from it with knowledge of the owner so it actually places you in a really good position. I'd just like to say thank you for all your questions we are answering them all if you haven't had a reply yet you will be be getting one. Do visit the blog and look at my top tips and from everyone at Trusted House Sitters, thank you and we will see you next year.